everyone, how's it going? Christian here, and I am at Ken Johnson Palms with my friend Ken Johnson, and we were going to do a little bit of a walk around and a little talk about what Ken does and uh, what kind of plants are here and how he does it. So, Ken, you want to tell us a little bit about what you do here at the uh, the nursery? Well, um, I live here and I grow the palm trees around my house. That's true. And uh, uh, a plant like this, Copernicia hospita, is uh, the kind of thing I'd like to specialize in. Um, slow growing, uh, low, low supply, high demand, and uh, maybe we'll see a couple of finished products of, of Copernicia as we go around. Sounds good. In fact, if you want to turn around and just look behind that Volkswagen the, the head there. Yeah, there's a hospita back there, yeah. So then the other important crop here is Satakentia. And that one is worthy of yeah. video. So Definitely. Some of them are a little thin. These are left from taking a lot of plants out over the last year. And they'll thicken up. And some of them won't. I'll hit them with the chainsaw. Right. Yeah, unfortunately, there's always going to be collateral there's damage. A, there's a young Satakentia there. Yeah, they kind of start off about that size yeah. when you first start planting them. see here, you know, a little bit bigger size of this and you know it's it's marketable Where yeah you're gonna start out with a plant like this is that a young macroglossa this is a phalance okay so that's copernicia phalance there and this is a uh, juvenile becoming mature copernicia macroglossa so but one thing that Ken does that not a lot of other nurseries do is uh, field transplant where you can buy the plant directly out of the ground. They'll dig it up and bring it to your door and install it. And then for uncommon bombs. This is left over from many years ago, Leucothrinax morsi. Yeah, that's uh, got to be fairly old. Yeah, it's old and uh, doesn't sell well. Yeah, it, it, you know, for a Florida native, unfortunately, you know, we wish that they could sell better, but... They, they grow so slow you can't make any money on them. This is a right. big, going to be big, uh, Adelaide Cohoon. The leaf I'm holding here is broken off from Irma. Uh, okay. A couple so, other should ones. give you an idea of how fast or how slow they grow, I should say. And then, a I room. always like the way they look down at the base where the, the leaves, leaves tatter. accumulate. Like yeah. Uh, but from here you can see... A uh, pretty good shot over here with the sun on. Oh yeah, right here. Right up with the, the pur yeah, purplish oh, silver yeah. color there. And there it is heading towards the power line. So yeah, so it's pushing. I gotta get it out. Twenty plus feet with the fronds, but. And it, there's another young one there. These these palms you'll see if you go to Belize, they're actually all over the place. But here they're not nearly as common, and they're not a very fast grower. Here you can see uh, Copernicia baleana that's. From over here, you can see uh, the digging process. Where we've root pruned it, and, and uh, it's going to be uh, transplanted pretty soon. You can see some of the bigger rock that we've removed. Yeah, from, that's uh, the that's the and soil then, here. <laughs> here, you can see really the beauty of the palm is 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 a lot of it is right here, right on, on the inside, and and of course from the outside you saw the silver color. Yeah, and especially in the sun. And then. This is a, a young tahini, uh, tahini behind me, <laughs> Yeah. That um, you know would be a classic example of something I'd sell soon. And right there, you can see where I just took out a, a tree. Yeah, and you can see that natural soil is just a lot of coral rock. It's basically digging in concrete. Shovels don't really work very well here. And, and here's uh, tahina here. Hey, it's a, a tahina spectabilis, yeah. Misspoke on earlier. That's uh. About we'll 11, we 10, 11 years old or so. And here's another macro gloss that's coming on in here. Yeah, this is, I mean, people, this is quite a popular palm. I think this gets a lot of people that are some, you know, somewhat collectors really get them into the more rare. It's curious looking. Yeah. People are surprised that it is a palm tree. Yeah, because it doesn't. And, and so that starts the conversation. Exactly. And then when you look at it, of course, it's mesmerizing. Yeah, it's so a, easy to look at. Because people think it's just one wrapping of, of, but this is actually a frond right here, this entire piece that starts there and wraps all the way around on over 180 degrees, almost 270 degrees around the plant. 
and that's what makes it so interesting. You don't see that really in any other uh, species. It's, it's sort of imitated by a pandanus. Right. Yeah. And when you start first start, you get confused as to whether you're looking at a pandanus or a macrovalsa. Right. And there's tahina, and I think that another tahina here. The, photo, the shot from here. Yeah. yeah, you can. What I think is good, you know, there's yeah, there's a nice huge leaves. And one thing I like about the tahinas, then they get this size, is they show that dicetious growth pattern um, at the base where it grows kind of, you know, outward in two directions before it really gets a spherical, I'm sorry, a circular base. It's almost like it spirals it's, itself it's into so a... It's funny that it's so much like Corypha. Right. And not related to it at all. Yeah, it's very... It's parallel evolution at its finest. Yeah. See, here's, you can see it's... it's it, the diastasis growth going side to side. Now it's kind of coming back and forth, <laughs> kind of creating a circular base like any other palm would. Spiral almost. Yeah. It's almost like a spiral in kind of two sections. And here's a palm that a lot of people ask me about. Foxy Lady. Yeah, this is interesting because this is the results of Foxy Lady pollen put back onto a uh, foxtail palm. Yeah. And then I planted the seeds from the foxtail and grew them. And this is one of a couple I have on the property and it's fruiting. And now I'm checking to see if this fruit is fertile. So far it hasn't sprouted. Yeah, as you can see a lot of, you know, when uh, you, foxy ladies are mules naturally, meaning they don't produce their own seed without help from pollen from another species that, uh, such as a vici or a foxtail or a foxy and lady. Normally, I wouldn't have a fox spell, but I keep that one for cross pollination, hoping yeah. to get more foxy ladies. <clears throat> second generations. And there's this other here. Some other. These are F ones or F twos. Ones. So here's the F ones, meaning first generation foxy ladies. And here's here's an unlikely suspect in a coral rock garden in the full sun, but this is Caryodoxa, which is actually. The, the very close relative of tahina, yeah. Of that tahina back That's an, there. That's another nice one. You can see the similarity between the leaf structure. Yeah, you can see the structure. You look at the, the segmentation right here and the way the mid ribs kind of are prominent. I mean, I'm sorry, the ribbing is prominent. There's not a mid rib in the palmate. But then, mm -hmm. then we go over here. See the same thing here. And see the seg segmentations here. And they're a little bit, they're, they're irregular and they go throughout the uh, plant. Or at the front, I should say. All right. And hopefully there's some seed will drop from those in time, but a lot of the bunk seed and pollen are down some below. Chamberonia seed right there. Is there? Oh, yeah. Plant's kind of coming through a little funk, but it... From Hurricane Irma. Oh, that's from Irma? Wow, yeah. I could definitely see that, but yeah, there's some, that seed should probably end up being good. Interesting. I had some heavy wind that went right through here, this section of the property. Okay. And then here, that, this palm's been here since I've been coming here for almost 15 years. <laughs> Dips is uh, Madagascariensis, or is yeah. that the hybrid? Yeah, it's an, it's an older member of the farm. Yeah. This is Sable Yapa. When people think sable, they usually think palmetto or sometimes a cozy arm or minor, but this is one of the lesser cold hardy varieties. It's a little more tropical of a species. We got more satacentias, a little forest of satacentias. Oh, yeah. Side, sun behind you. Right. Over here. Shoot this one. Yeah, a little Pseudophoenix vinifera. And this is often grown uh, more, more more often, I should say, than the native Sargentii because of its beauty and its bigger size overall. And it's also faster. It's also the danger zone because it doesn't like to get too wet. Yeah, we've seen these go downhill. Some Thrinex radiata. Yeah. Not very good for video quality, but this is some more back here. Young 
Yeah, it's like a hospita, possibly hospita. Kind of have to grow it to see if it's going to become a hybrid. Macro glosses. Okay, so they're. Macro oh, macro glossa there, yeah. Ma macro carpa. Macro carpa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. macro carpa. Yeah. Copernicia macro glossa. And then, was there a macro glossa there? That was a dipsis. Okay. Uh, like, I mean, uh, <clears throat> what's this called? Dipsis pembana. Yeah, pembana, yeah. Looking very nice, very fat. Which I th we, I personally think is a better palm. This is more tropical looking, faster growing, a little more cold hardy. I've been root pruning this Copernicia. How long does it take to root prune a Copernicia? Well, you want to use 12 months if, if you want to err on the side of best judgment. If you, if you start... Uh, early in the year and, and progress fast through the summer you can potentially do it before the end of the summer yeah and, but you still want some hot days left at the end of the summer to get it rooted in its new hole of course yeah and here you can see uh, nice kentiopsis yeah there's some of, beautiful uh, kentiopsis there uh, a couple of cool looking uh, carboxylon Carpoxylon in a big hole where we took out a Copernicia. Yeah, those are those are a little bit harder to transplant. Yeah. Well, they're tra hard to transport because of the, the problem that the crown shaft is so delicate. Right. Yeah, that's true. It's a, such a large crown shaft. Here's Clinostigma savorianum, which uh, is struggling for me. I'm probably going to discontinue growing it. There's two more over there. Yeah, it's a little bit of a trial and error situation when we find palms that we think might be good for the area. You put a few in and see how well they take into the ground. I like that Bacario Phoenix back there. Yeah. I'm not too interested in growing them. I've dumped fertilizer on it and it's still yellow. That one yeah. there is greenish. Yeah. But Probably I do have shade. a couple green ones, but nothing that's a real stud that I'd be proud of. Right. Yeah, sometimes it just in these soils that are might be a little bit uh, nutrient deficient, they seem to just not be a fan. There's another one there. Uh, Adelaide buteracea or phalerata? Phalerata, I yeah. Think With some, well, I guess that seed may form there. No. No? Not forming seed lately. Um, Looks like that's going to end up dropping, yeah. Looks necrotic. Just trying, to get, just trying to get enough pollen out when the females are ready, and I don't think they're ready. Yeah. There's another Tahina Jr. Yeah. That's all from the same seed crop from 2008, right? Yeah. Mine are a little smaller than some people's because I delayed planting them in the ground. Uh, Not knowing if they would do well. I just didn't really know what to do with them. Yeah. Now, now I'm trying to make room for them because they have a 40 foot spread. Yeah. I know. You're going to have to take out trees all over the place to fit that thing in, which I'm going to do. I have 15 of them. Yeah. This guy right here, that's a. Uh... Heterospathy. Yeah, I was gonna say it looks like heterospathy lotta there. Yeah. Not not a it used to be a more common palm, but they just don't use it as much because it just doesn't this doesn't handle most conditions in Florida well, as well. It's real fast growing and so it, it outgrows the landscape super fast. Yeah. This is Copernicia guy, I guess I'm There we go. At. Okay. I'm getting it ready to go to a job as well. There's a cool coconut there. I don't like coconuts because they take up so much space, but that thing is dwarfy looking. Yeah, it is. Look at how. The top of it. It's a little burned up. Yeah. I don't know what happened there. It's muddy or something. But I mean, that's a super dwarfish coconut. That's... And spicata. Yeah? Looks like a yellowish spicata type. It's a weird color because the mother was pollinated by unknown. Okay. Interesting. She had babies that were several colors. That is one of the smallest fruiting. Let's I mean, go I... on this a particular vlog let's make sure we go by this other coconut that's like this but bright yellow with oh yeah eyes. we're headed towards it now <laughs> Sorry, I'm tomorrow. Okay. Uh, Phoenix Argentii. nice mm -hmm. got a couple kumquats for the garden oh yeah there's nothing wrong with planting some stuff for yeah is that a Kona? Coban? Coban? Yeah, it looks like it. it that, that's a Rafis Excelsa, very, very, I'm uh, sorry, 
ecotype Koban or parentheses Koban. It's a wider leaf version of the North typical Raphis excelsa. It's also Koban Nishiki, which is a variegated version of the Koban. Oh yeah, look at this. This is a hybrid with, with a, a, a tall type, a robust type of coconut. Yeah. With a Malayan, I think. Some that's pretty impressive. Yeah, it's a, they're colorful. That That's nice stuff right there. When I, when I think of a coconut I want in my yard, I want one with if that. If you think sort. that's good, come and look at the same thing. Yeah. Only a quarter of the size. Oh, yeah. And there was another third coconut here back in the day, the, the one that lined the... Uh, look at this thing here. Yeah. Wow, that thing is just full of fruit. It's amazing, isn't it? Check that out. It's like fluorescent. <laughs> There's flames coming out of it. Yeah. And it just doesn't stop fruiting. It just, it's like 100%. No, not 100%, but it's not, you know, some heavy, coconuts. Heavy. Yeah. Beautiful. Ripe fruit. Nearly ripe. Yeah. This it looks like it makes a small nut. I'm a smaller than average. Definitely small. Yeah. If that's nearing maturity there. Yes, yeah, really close. But I mean, one thing that people do seem to love is being able to get coconuts without having to climb a... What yeah. I want to do is to grow that seed yeah, and see what sprouts. If, if it pollinated with that big one over there, yeah, get some different things out of it. And I hate to grow it, though, at the same time, because, again, look how much space this tree took. Yeah. That's a, uh, uh, name that palm tree next to it, Christian. That tall, skinny one. You uh, from somewhere else. You have to go let me go it. back up here. Yeah. It looks like, uh, let's see. You know, make me look bad in my own. Starts with an A. An A? Actinoritis? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that is one. You know, you just don't see that very often. That's especially one that big. I had one in the yard uh, that died in 2010. Let's go look at the reverse watermelon. Okay. There's one of the offspring. Yeah, there's... Well, you know, that'd be interesting putting like a couple Kentiopsis in a Satakenti or a couple Satakenti and a Kentiopsis in a clump, seeing how they would fare, although it would be a little, if it doesn't do well, you kind of are out some nice plants. Let's take a look at this here. Boy, I wish it was cleaner. I've been running a lot of water on it. Yeah, there's, it's hard, it might be hard to see there, but that's, it's a, uh, Oh, there we go. That's beautiful. So that's a Chamberonia hookeri back cross with a green, just a regular green Chamberonia macrocarpa, and uh, you get that reverse watermelon look. Usually, it's mostly green with some yellow. That's mostly yellow with some green. This is a this triangle. This guy has been here since the nineties, I assume. I transplanted it from somewhere. Baby's coming up on Jeez. the Copernicia baby that'll be more important. Yeah, but. Still impressive. It's a nice tahina. Yeah. Up there is a nice uh, V fox, the foxy lady, and yeah. the sable Marisha formis. Putting out some seed though. Yeah, That's a lot of seed on the ground. That's the interesting thing about Marisha formis is it's such a beautiful palm. The one part that isn't as beautiful is the, is the infer, inflorescence. It kind of <laughs> takes away from the dead bloom spike. Yeah. Ooh, look, Prochardia. Looks like Hildebrandtii. Although, it could be Thurstone. It's hard to kind of tell at this age. There's another one in the bushes back there. I have another one over here. Oh, yeah. See of Andrew Street. Yeah. Oh, that's There's not... another South American oil. Yeah. Uh, another Cahoon. Yeah, and we could one. talk about this Utan. Yeah, no... the Utan was collected out of a yard and then neglected out of the ground. And then uh, when I had a hole big enough to put it in, I drug it over here. It started to get a nice head in Hurricane Irma, tore it up, and now it's got some leaves, but it's real thin in the trunk. Yeah, the I'm just giving them some idea of just how 
thick that trunk is. Yeah. It can be up to almost four feet wide at the base. There's another cohoot. Yeah. That is definitely nice. And for those of you who don't watch this entire vlog, I'm going to do some separate uh, species vlogs. So that's a beautiful macro gloss. So look at how glossy that gl macro gloss is. Hence the name. Right there. Oh, yeah. The hand back there behind it. Well, it looks pretty good. I guess we'll go ahead and, and wrap this up. We're going to get some lunch. But, uh, yeah, if you guys have any interest in getting some specimen plants, I'll leave Ken's uh, name and number at the bottom of the vlog. Right. You He'll can find me on uh, Facebook under Ken Johnson Palms. You'll see a lot of pictures of what I grow on my contact information is there as well. Yeah, so ex excellent prices for some uncommon plants and palms and some other hardwoods as well. So, um, all right, well, that sounds good. And uh, glad we got to take a little uh, wraparound tour. And thanks, everyone, for watching. And we will see everyone next time.